club legends. Like we always talk about Shearer being a club legend, obviously, with a goal scorer and all the rest of it. Um, but I want to talk about underrated club legends because I just want to give a shout out to some ones that don't usually get a shout out. One that sticks out in my head is Shay Given. Spent a majority of his career at the club. But is there any ones that kind of stick out in your mind who think they're a club legend for whatever reason? They might not have been at our club for years, but again, they might contribute in some sort of way. One that sticks out to me is Colacini. Like, I don't know how long was at our club, but he stopped careers through relegation. And we'll go back to that season one, we finished fifth, and he was immense. Like, he was, I think he got in the, um, the yeah. team of the year that season, didn't he? And he had a partnership. Was it Stephen Taylor? Him and Taylor at the back to start with. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, him, Colacini, on his day, like, he, he was world class. I know he, he made a few errors here and there, but the best defenders do. But he was as world class. And for me, he was underrated club legend for me. I always used to say about Colacini when people used to slate him. Because he came in in our relegated season. So it was a hard season for him. But I always used to say, that, you know, you don't get, you know, you don't play for Argentina regularly and, and, and go to major competitions if you're a bad player. Now, yeah. Argentina have always had a massive pool of players in every position, but he always he was always a regular. So there was something always about him that, that set him apart from other players, and you knew the quality was going to come through. Um, I, I just think it was just because he was surrounded by crap in defence <laughs> for a lot of his time. They're the reason why he never got to flourish. And that one season, when we finished fifth, everything came together and he was allowed to, to show, showcase his, his abilities. Um, so I, I definitely, you know, he, he's definitely a club, club legend. Um, he, he did a lot for the club. Yeah, but I, I know we've got like Fabian Charles and Lejeune now, but when have we ever had a ball playing defender like that? Like, you know, we've, we've never had one of that type. So. Uh, we did, in my opinion, we did. The, the first okay. real ball, ball player we had was um, Philip Harbert. Oh, um, back yeah. in the day, he was a proper ball player. He was he was probably our first ball player that we had in defence. Um, and then Jonathan Woodgate. I mean, I mean, Jonathan Woodgate to me was up there with one. Of, he's probably, in my opinion, the best defender yeah. that we've had the club, even yeah. ahead of Philip Harbert, who was a fantastic player. Jonathan Woodgate's ability had him above, um, in my opinion, at that particular time, he was above John Terry. He was on a par with Rio Ferdinand. He was that good of a defender. We only paid, what, 11 million for him. His injuries ruined it. His injuries mm. ruined it. You know, like, you know, the fact that Real Madrid wanted to pay what they paid for him, 15 million, which was a lot of money at the time, for a centre-back, um, you know, who hadn't, wasn't around, hadn't been around that long. Um, He's such a talented player, but Colacini was then the next one after that, mm. on that level, who could carry the ball out. What about you, Seb? Any, any underrated club legends that spring to mind? Yeah, I'm going to go for one we went for, I've gone for before, and I'm going to say Denver Bar. We got him for free, and I think um, at the peak of his form, I think he could have basically got into nearly any team in the league the way he was playing. And, um, yeah, I think, obviously, he left because his, his head was turned from moves to Chelsea. But at the time, as I said, he was scoring all types of goals. You'd have to ask yourself, how much would he be worth if we were to sell him at the peak of his form? And the fact that since Shearer's left, for some reason, there's a story that people go around saying, Cissé is the best striker we've had since Shearer left. Yeah, technically, number nine, fair enough. But as a striker, Demba Bar was just an all-round better striker. But Seb, since but when, did you remember, when we, remember when we first signed him, the fans were kicking off because yeah. he had a bad injury record. There was rumours that he, yeah. he, he, he failed the medical at Stoke and then we picked him up. Yeah. 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 No, that's and, true. Yeah. Yeah, and then um, I think this, the January before we sold Carroll to Liverpool, and then he was Carroll's replacement as a free transfer. We didn't spend yeah. no money that summer. We got Demba Bar at free. Like uh, he, he was known as like you know injury prone, bad knees. Yeah. You know? But then he just came in. I think he scored. I think he scored two hat tricks in the space of what two or three games, and then he you was know just. Tell you what, kicked off his form. There was a. Because I remember this exact day, I was at football training that day, and I just I didn't watch the game, but I checked the result on my app, 
Do you remember the game where he, he scored a hat trick where we beat Stoke three 0 away? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's where his form started. He just went on a hot. Yeah, he's wearing his top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, like every game he thought he was going to score, like, mm. Mm. and um, that's the best value. I don't want to go business wise, but that's the best value. I think that's the best value for money we've had out of the signing. But then, but then we sold him for how much? <laughs> What's it? Yeah, 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 I know. Yeah, if, we sold if, him. if we're, if we we're for, for what we got out of him, the goals we got out of him, we got mm. him for free. Mm. And uh, how much he would have been worth if we had a if Ashley had his brain switched on properly, but yeah. Um, I know it's probably too early to say, but sorry, sorry, Pete. I'm just gonna say one sec. I know it's probably too early to say, but is there anyone from the current squad that you might suggest might be a club legend? Names that spring to mind: Lascelles, um, Richie, uh, Dubravka, maybe those. May, those may be the only three, and obviously. People might say sit maximum, but depends how long he stays with us, say with our mirror. But anyone out the current crop, you know what? You know what? I like, um, obviously, our mirror, yeah, fair enough. But I think Fabian Shaw, if he stayed, he could be that, that defender that we had in the Philip Albert mold, Colicini mold, like ball player. He is our ball playing defender now. So, obviously, I know he's been on the bench, I know he's unhappy on the bench that he hasn't been playing, but, um, if we got him in the side playing every week, even with a takeover, he's not the type of player I would say, right, yeah, let's replace him with someone else. He's the best ball-playing defender. The, so the, only issue, the, only issue, sorry, the only issue with Cher is um, he can't play the four, 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 yeah. two. Yeah. He, has to play, he has to play. If you look at his game with Switzerland, he always plays in the three at the back. He's always the right. <laughs> that right side of centre-back, there's no one better than him. He's... Quality, he's ideal for that position, but in a in a in a two man defense, he's just he, he can't do it. He gets what he's saying is a bit like David Luiz, then he gets found out when he plays in a two, yeah. Yeah, I mean, David Luiz is a bit different because I think he can play in a two, I think he's got the physical attributes, he's good in the air. I know he's a bit mental and that, but I think he, he David Luiz can play in a two, but. Cher can't. I don't. I don't think he's strong enough. I don't think he's got that physical uh, box to play in a two. In, in every team, in every team, Fabian Cher has played for. He's played in a defensive three, and that's the reason why um, Rafa Benitez signed him. He signed him for that exact reason because Rafa was going with a five in defence, and that's why he signed Fabian Cher. That's the problem, and that's honestly, I believe the reason why he's not been playing in the team. Um, Federico Fernandez, who I think probably could end up being a club legend, um, in my opinion, uh, purely because the guy is getting everything to the club. He leaves everything on the pitch. Mm. He leaves absolutely everything on the pitch. He puts his head in front of the uh, in front of the board. He does everything. Now he's not one of those standout superstar players. Like you've got Dubravka who saves his week in, week out, who will be a club legend, no doubt. Um, whether he left this summer or in two or three years' time, he will be a club legend for sure. But uh, Federico Fernandez, uh, he's, he's, he's won a lot of respect of the Newcastle fans this season because they've seen yeah. it, how hard he works for the team. And actually, he complements themselves quite well um, playing in that too. So I, I don't. I don't think I, I see Cher starting when, when we play Sheffield United. I see Federico oh, Fernandez. You know, Fernandez. But, but, but you know, Fernandez is what? I think he's 31. Is he going on 32? Yes, that, he, he, I think he just turned 30 or 30. Or yeah, I know, he's signed a new contract. I know he signed a new contract. But um, yeah, when the defender gets to that age, then do you think about bringing someone else? I, don't, I can't remember how old Shar is. Charles, 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 27, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, I mean, look, I mean, you need experienced players in there. And, and arguably, Fernandez is in the prime of his career. You probably still could get another couple of years out of him. And again, another Argentinian international, you know, who's, who's, played, who's played for for his country at, at the World Cup and at top level. So you can't underestimate his ability. He's a good player. Um, and, and he's shown that this season. He's probably arguably been our best centre-back. 
Charles not played a lot of football this season. Last season was by far our best centre back. This season he hasn't played a lot. Um, so th- th- there's you know there's actually question marks for uh, surprisingly whether he's even going to get back into the team because you don't replace him yourselves as a captain. But um, yeah, it, he actually wasn't going to be my my club legend, but I think he could be like one that might sneak under the. Um, under the rug, but I, I'd definitely go for Matt Richard. Um, the guy, he doesn't, he doesn't need an armband. He doesn't need an armband to lead the team. Uh, you can tell it. And I'm interested to hear, without sound, how much he talks in the game because you, you listen to all the players in their interviews. And, and the one thing they say about Matt Richard is he doesn't stop talking. He's shouting, he's encouraging yeah. the players he, all, all, all the time. He doesn't need an armband. Yeah. He's like the maverick in the squad, isn't he? He's like the charismatic one in the change room and all that. But yeah, do you remember that game against? Um, I think there was a game we lost, and um, he was signalling into acts. He was telling him to run harder. Or do you, do you remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he was all signalling to acts at that time. Come on, hurry up! Yeah, he, 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 he's quite awful. I do like Marachi. He does leave by the. And this is the thing. Like he does the things as a leader that. Lascelles doesn't necessarily do on the pitch. Lascelles isn't, isn't one of them that will have a go at a player, will do those kind of things by telling them what they need to do. He's not that type of guy, Lascelles. He kind of just, he does a, a lot of his leadership off the pitch. Matt Ritchie does it on the pitch and you need a guy on the pitch to be able to lead you through the game. Um, and yes, his, his end product isn't always, isn't always great, before his injury um, against Leicester earlier on in the season, that guy was an absolute machine. I don't think he missed a game. I think he literally played every single game and during that time played 90 minutes. And I'm talking like a full calendar year. The guy was an absolute machine and he would, he'd, he'd leave everything on the pitch for Newcastle. And actually, for, for a guy, I know he's Scottish, but for a guy that was brought up in uh, around Bournemouth and in uh, around the London area, to go to the opposite end of the country and to just settle into that way of life and to settle into the fan base and to be loved by so many fans, I think you know it's not easy to be done. No, I actually think I think I read somewhere that he's actually English. I think one of his parents is Scottish, but I'm not sure now. I can't quote on that. Yeah. yeah, that's how he qualified for Scotland. But the yeah, best yeah. thing he ever did was 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 um, was asking them not to select him because it was it was just an absolute waste of time. How we didn't get into the Scotland team, I had no idea. He'd just sit on the bench and he, 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 he'd go and train for the international team and just sit there and do nothing. He wouldn't get a game and then come back to the club. It was just a waste of an international break. Uh, and, and also, do you remember that summer when um, obviously Rafa wanted to re-sign Townsend when we got promoted? There was loads of rumours that it could be Richie Al. Townsend in, etc. Um, that that could have turned his head. He could have like lost trust in the manager and thought, "Oh, are you trying to sell me behind my back?" Because you hear stories about that where players come out and say, "Yeah, the manager said he didn't want to get rid of me, and then when he came down to it, he got rid of me." So I saw that kind of scenario brewing, and um, yeah, luckily him and Rafa managed to maintain their relationship and just keep it professional. He? he maintained he never really wanted to leave. Um, he, he never wanted to leave. There was a talk of um, Stoke paying 15 million for him or something like that at some point when Stoke won the Premier League. And he never wanted to leave. And he, I think he made that clear. He settled so well in Newcastle. And he loves, he loves the city. He's always out and about, fancying all the time. Um, and he loves it. And that's the kind of player that you want. You want that kind of player that, that's, you know, he might not show his quality all the time, but he's dogged. He works hard. He's exactly epitomising this start, this team and this style of play that we that we have, um, and he's a big part of it. And we've missed him. You, you yeah. know, it was a bad injury that he had, and we missed that work rate and we missed that leadership on the pitch to kind of get you through a game. Particularly if you're winning one nil, you're trying to dog it, like get through and, and really kind of like scrap it out. You need someone like Matt Ritchie in the team. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, obviously, oh. he, he just earned a new contract for a reason. Yeah, because he just yeah. 